home watching online, grab a seat and relax. If you're not feeling well, I just pray in Jesus' holy name that you'll be comforted. So in pre-prayer uh, service, it, it was uh, really amazing how the Lord was downloading things to us. Um, uh, one of us would, would get a word, and, and it was already something that somebody else had got before they even spoke it out. So it was just really amazing. And um, so I'm just going to open us, open us up in prayer. If there's anybody that want to come up to the altar and, and worship, we, we just want to glorify God as he sits on the throne. We have a lot to be thankful for, and the enemy wants to remind us of all these negative things that are around us, but we just cast them out and we rebuke them in Jesus' name. Uh, Pastor Bart did a, a really good sermon on uh, positivity feast and negativity fast. I think it's a good time right now to just do that. So Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for the precious gift of the Holy Spirit that you blessed us with. We just pray, Father God, in Jesus' holy name, for a mighty anointing on the worship team, a mighty anointing on Lisa, Lord, as she brings forth the message. And we just pray for a mighty anointing and filling of the sanctuary, Father God. You know every one of our heart, everyone's heart and thoughts, God. And we just give them all to you in sweet Jesus' holy name. Amen. If you're able, let's stand together and worship the Lord.
Show. Sure. 
Darkness now is ending. The kingdom of light.
Good morning, everyone. It is so, it's such a great feeling to think, this, Lord, let your heaven come. Just so, um, just so overwhelming, just so indescribable. It's just, I just love it. Um, we're going to move into declarations. Um, everybody, I want you to say this with me. Cold weather doesn't bother me. <laughs> all right. Keep working on that one. Keep working on that one all week. Keep working on that one all week. Um, all right. I declare that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, that nobody comes to the Father except through him. I choose to live my life according to the truth, which is revealed to me through the written and spoken word. Jesus is the living word. I live a life of victory because the Lord sets me free. God, we thank you. We thank you for that. Um, I'm also uh, uh, praying over the offering. Uh, those of you that came in today, uh, thank you very much. Um, Lord, we just, we bless. We bless the offering today. Uh, we have many ways to give. You can see the offering. There's a plate in the back, online, through the app. There's a number of different ways. The Lord makes it very easy, very easy to give. So uh, we thank you. We thank you for this blessing. Um, Lord, you say this is the one area that we can test you. Uh, and so uh, let's test him. Let's test him today and, and give. Because he gives us so much every day, every day, second by second, he is there for us. So I pray a blessing over the offering today. Let it pour out. <sighs> Lord, thank you. Thank you for all that you do for us. Bless those who bless you in, in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. There's a lot happening at Ever Hills Church. If you or your loved ones are in need of emotional or physical healing, want to see a breakthrough in your life, or have other prayer requests, then we invite you to come to our next encounter night on Friday, February 4th at 6.30 p.m. These nights are dedicated to creating a safe, loving atmosphere where you come and encounter God through prayer, communion, prophetic words, dream interpretation, and more. We look forward to seeing what God has in store for you. At Inver Hills Church, Sozo is a vital part of seeing people healed, saved, and delivered. We are just as excited to see others trained up and stepping into the role of ministering to others. If you are interested in learning more about Sozo or becoming part of the IHC Sozo team, then take advantage of this one-day training at Dare to Believe Ministries, led by Christy Grainer. To sign up, go to their website, dbtmn.org. Finally, if you are interested in what Inver Hills Church is doing around the world, come to a missions meeting on Sunday, February 6th, following the morning service. This will not only be informative, but a chance to see how you can play a part in developing ideas and goals in our missions department. For the men, breakfast is now being served right here at the church on Saturday, February 5th at 8.30. Please sign up to let us know you're coming. Good morning. Before I forget, um, just to let you guys know, the tax statements are going to be printed out this week and sent in the mail. So if you are looking for those, just know that they will be on their way. Well, we went to a leadership retreat this the last couple days. Um, some of the leaders from the church got together just to pray into the new year and uh, just see what God wants to do. And it was such an incredible time. We are so blessed at this church with amazing leaders. And to just hear what God is speaking to their hearts, um, even just to have moments of quiet time together and just let God speak to us and then hear the visions, the, the things that God speaks to each one. It's so incredible, so powerful. And we're just, we're very blessed. And it's a great time of year for a retreat because we're, we're looking at the year ahead and at what God wants to do. And the theme was shift. And you'll hear a lot about this in the weeks to come, the months to come. But really that idea that we need to shift what we believe if we want to see different things happen. There's a shift that needs to happen with our mindset or with our actions if we want different results. And so... One of the things 
that God laid on my heart before we actually went to the retreat, just as I was praying about the new year, was the word multiplication. And this is a word that's been spoken over some of the leaders at the church as well, this multiply, multiply, God wants to multiply. And it was actually maybe a couple years ago that I had a dream. I was actually, it was the afternoon and I was praying and I fell asleep while I was praying. <laughs> Oops. And, <laughs> and it was just like, I just nodded off for a, a minute or two. But in that moment, I had this dream of like bunnies in a cage in the church parking lot. And I was out there with the staff, and there's these bunnies, and we're opening the cages so the bunnies could get out. And we were trying to get the bunnies to go into the church. And it was like we got some in, and then there was another bunny, and there was another bunny. And we're like, there's all these bunnies, and we're trying to get them into the church. And I woke up, and I was like, God, what's with the bunnies? <laughs> and he said, they multiply quickly. And what I thought was new believers, people being set free and being brought into the kingdom of God and how rapidly when God starts moving, how that can happen and it can multiply. And I believe God is wanting to speak into this idea of multiplication. And I'm going to go more into that later in the message, but it got me thinking about math. How many of you like math? Is there anyone here? We got some. Jeremiah, awesome. I see Scott in the back. Yeah, all right. So, in math, um, do, you, do you remember trying to solve for X? Okay, some of you kids may not be there yet, but my kids are at that point where, um, especially Macy with math now, trying to solve for X. And so we've got a slide here, if you want to pull up the next one. Just in case you know you need a refresher on math. 3X plus 2 equals what? You can't solve that equation because you don't know what X stands for, right? It is the X factor that the answer is dependent on. And by definition, the X factor is a variable in a given situation that could have the most significant impact on the outcome. So whatever X is will determine the outcome, okay? So if X is three, then three times three, Hattie, three times three. Nine, awesome. <laughs> Add two to that, Allie, nine plus two. You guys didn't know you were going to have to work if you were down here, did you? Eleven, all right. <laughs> but if you change X to a million, all of a sudden you've got three million and two. It completely changes what the answer is. In our life, our X factor is God. He is the variable that you invite into the equation into the problem that you're trying to solve, and what he does affects the outcome. So with that in mind, I'd like you to turn in your Bibles to Mark chapter 6, or if you have the Bible app, we will have it on the screen as well. So Mark chapter 6. Kids, is that Old Testament or New Testament? Very good, New Testament. <laughs> We ask that a lot in kids' church because they're trying to learn where the books are and all those different things. All right. So we're in Mark chapter 6, verse 30. So the apostles returned to Jesus from their ministry tour and told him all they had done and taught. Then Jesus said, let's go off by ourselves to a quiet place and rest a while. He said this because there were so many people coming and going that Jesus and his apostles didn't even have time to eat. So here they are. They've been doing all this work for God um, and they're trying to get away to a quiet place so they can rest. So they left by boat for a quiet place where they could be alone. And I just want to say at the retreat uh, this last couple of days, one of the activities that we did in the afternoon was to have different groups build a boat. They were given a bag of random supplies, and they had to make a boat. They had to answer different questions like, how is this boat powered? What kind of a boat is it? You know, what does it do? Um, what's the name of the boat, different things like that. If you haven't seen the pictures yet, if you have Facebook, you should go out and look at the pictures. Um, it was a lot of fun watching them create their boats. So they go out by boat, and many people recognized them and saw them leaving, and people from many towns ran ahead along the shore and got there ahead of them. Jesus saw the huge crowd as he stepped from the boat, and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. Okay, so they're trying to get away. They wanted to eat. There's all these people, and Jesus has so much compassion. He's ministering to the people. 
But late in the afternoon, his disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the nearby farms and villages and buy something to eat. But Jesus said, You feed them. With what? they asked. We'd have to work for months to earn enough money to buy food for all these people. Well, how much bread do you have? he asked. Go find out. So they came back and reported, We have five loaves of bread and two fish. And then Jesus told the disciples to have the people sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of 50 or 100. And Jesus took the five loaves and two fish. He looked up toward heaven and he blessed them. Then, breaking the loaves into pieces, he kept giving the bread to the disciples so they could distribute it to the people. He also divided the fish for everyone to share. And they all ate as much as they wanted. And afterward, the disciples picked up 12 baskets of leftover bread and fish. A total of 5,000 men and their families were fed. God, I thank you that your math is not like our math. As Scott back in the booth would say, you have magic math. (laughs) We thank you, God, for what you want to teach us through this passage. Just reveal yourself to us through your words. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're talking about the X factor, that when you invite God into a situation, it changes things. So the first thing I want to point out is that God is an extreme God. Okay? And yes, with the way my goofy mind works, these are all going to have X's in the words to help us remember. <laughs> so God is an extreme God. If something is extreme, it's very great in degree or intensity. So like today, you go outside, it's the extreme cold. And we've had worse cold than this. It actually feels pretty nice out with the sun out there. I was telling Thomas, I heard a bird chirping this morning. I was like, what is that crazy bird doing? But (laughs) it's cold out there. Extreme is going beyond what is usual or reasonable. Like something can be extremely dangerous. So here's the statement in Mark 6, 37. Jesus said, you feed them. And the disciples, I mean, they're like, what? Imagine this scene, okay? Um, How many of you have ever been to the state fair? Yeah? Okay, like to go get some corn dogs or cheese curds, sweet Martha's, cookies, you know, like those, Jeremiah? Yeah? So you go out to the state fair, and what amazes me is the sea of people, I mean, you can look back and it's like, oh my goodness, how are we going to walk through that? There's so many people. So imagine 5,000 men, their families, their children, the massive crowd that that would have been. And Jesus looks at his, at his disciples and he says, you feed them. What? I mean, that's a huge crowd. That's an extreme statement that Jesus made. But our God goes to extremes. He goes beyond the limit. He goes to extreme measures for us. Okay? This is extreme, that God so loved the world that he sent his son to die for our sins that we could have eternal life. That's extreme. John 15, 13 says, There's no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That's extreme. That's extreme. Here's some other examples of extreme. Abraham. Love reading about Abraham. I've done studies on Abraham. God told him, leave what you know, leave your home, and go to the place that I'm going to show you. He didn't get a lot of details, you know, about where exactly he was headed or what was going to happen, but God told him to go. That's extreme, to leave what's familiar and step out into the unknown. That's an extreme thing. And then later in Abraham's life, to tell him to sacrifice his only son, the son that God had promised to him, that's extreme. But Abraham knew God had a plan. What about Luke chapter 18 talks about the rich young ruler. And he said to Jesus, what do I need to do to have eternal life? And Jesus told him, sell all you have, give everything to the poor, and then come follow me. And the rich young ruler is thinking, well, that seems a bit extreme (laughs) to sell everything I have and follow you. But to follow Jesus, he may ask you to do things that are beyond you, that push you out of your comfort zone, beyond your limits. Pastor Bart started a series on the Sermon on the Mount. And a lot of Jesus' teaching is extreme. Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. That's not very fun to do right now at times in the days that we're living in. There's so much clashing going on. But God calls us to love 
our enemies. That's an extreme way of thinking in the world that we live in. God is extreme. He challenges our thinking. He sees thousands without food, and he tells the disciples, you feed them. He calls us to do things that are so beyond ourselves. And at this retreat that we were at, in one of the last sessions, we just were dreaming with God. Like, God, what are your dreams for Inver Hills Church? What, are, what do you want to do here? And the things that we started writing and brainstorming were so extreme of what we want to see God do. And I'm so excited about what God's going to do. And we're going to be doing things with, with this dream board to, to communicate out to the church what God, what we feel God is saying and what he wants to do. But when you invite God into the equation, into the dream, into what he's saying, it changes everything. He's the X factor. So serving an extreme God means you get to exercise your faith. So with feeding the 5,000, man, the disciples' reactions, let's, let's take a look. Mark chapter 6, verse 37. So Jesus said, you feed them. They said, with what? They asked. We'd have to work for months to earn enough money to buy food for all these people. Essentially, we don't have the resources. You know, are you crazy? You want us to do what? What you're asking isn't possible. And it wasn't. It was not physically possible for them to do what God was asking them to do. They're saying, this is all we have and it's not enough. And it kind of reminds me of Moses. You guys remember when Moses saw God in the burning bush? And God told him, hey, I'm going to use you to deliver my people from Egypt. And I'm going to send you into Pharaoh, and, and you're going to be used by me to deliver the people. And he's like, what? I can't do that. I'm not a good speaker. I can't do that, God. So many times we see the impossible, but we forget that God is the X factor that God is the unknown variable in the situation, and that when you invite God into the equation, it changes everything. The outcome is completely different when he's involved in the solution. And so this was an opportunity for them to exercise their faith. So Jeremiah, and maybe one other kid, can you run down to the front real quick? Jeremiah and Alana, come on down. I got a question for you. Come on, come on. All right, so we're talking about exercising our faith. So I want to know, is there a kind of exercise that you like to do? Jumping jacks. Okay, jumping jacks. You want to do one right now for us? Awesome. Good job. <laughs> what do you like to do for exercise? Um, jumping jacks, too. Jumping jacks. Okay. You like Sonic. Do you like to run at all? Because he's, like, pretty fast. Do you like running, too? Yes. Yeah. What, other, what does Abigail do around the house? Just run. Does she chase you? Yeah, a lot of chasing. Okay. Yeah. Cool. You play games. So do you know why exercise is good for us? <gasps> Here she comes. Give me five. All right. Do you like to spin, Abigail? You like dancing, don't you? Can you give us a little twirl? Can you do a little spin? Yeah? Here. There you go. Awesome. Way to go. So why is exercise good for us? it's healthy for you to do. It's healthy for you to do? You got any other answer? No? We're good? Okay, let's give them a hand. Good job, you guys. <laughs> so at the beginning of the year, a lot of times people will set goals for what they want to do for exercise or to get in shape. Uh, exercise is important for us, right? It helps us with weight control and diseases, you know, it can prevent heart disease and different things, high blood pressure. Um, it even said when I was looking, it helps a person age well. Aerobic exercise strengthens your heart and lungs, so they get better at getting oxygen throughout your body. Uh, you use your muscles, they get stronger, right? It just strengthens everything in your body, and it improves your flexibility. So lots of benefits to exercising. Pushing yourself at the gym or when you're running helps build strength and endurance too, right? It just makes you so much stronger. But it's the same thing with our faith. You've got to exercise your faith muscle. It's so important. So exercising your faith prevents diseases like negativity, like doubt, like complaining, and it strengthens in us our hope. 
There's so many benefits. If you want to strengthen your faith, read Hebrews 11. It is a long list of people who had faith in God. In fact, Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance about things that we cannot see. So, for example, going back to Abraham, God tells Abraham and Sarah, you're going to have a child. And this child, I mean, you're going to have descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, as, as much as the sand on the sea, sure, um, that he's going to have this incredible blessing. But they were 90 and 100. It was 25 years later that that promise came to pass, that they were exercising their faith, learning that with God all things are possible. Moses' parents, I mean, there was a decree that boys were getting killed because they were afraid that the Hebrews were getting so powerful that there were so many in number that they wanted to kill the boys. And so Moses' parents hid him for three months. They kept him hidden because they had faith. They were exercising their faith that God had a plan for their child. And they had no way of knowing that God was going to use him one day to set his people free. Esther had faith to go before the king to save her people. I mean, there's story after story after story of people who had to step out in faith. Exercising your faith means taking what you do have and giving it to God to make something of it that you just couldn't do on your own. It was a young boy who had the fish and loaves. Okay, One young boy who had the fish and loaves. So kids, you guys like Happy Meals? Yeah, chicken nuggets? Anyone? Yeah, adults, chicken nuggets, anybody? Okay. <laughs> Fries, those kind of things. So imagine you're out there, and there's kids around. There's all these people around, and you're sitting there with your Happy Meal. You've got your chicken nuggets and fries, and all of a sudden they're like, does anybody have food? And nobody's got any food, and you're like, I've got my Happy Meal. I mean, you have a choice there. Are you going to share what you have? That little boy didn't know what was going to happen with his food. What if he wouldn't have given it? Right? What if he wouldn't have shared what he had? How would that have changed the story? Now, God would have found a way, because it's who he is, but that boy would have missed out on being a part of the miracle that God was going to do. He would have missed out on being a part of that experience. What if the people would have taken the basket from the disciples and not passed it? Right? All this food was getting passed out. What if at some point someone was like, I'm taking all of this for me and for my family. It's mine. <laughs> Okay, they had to keep passing it along in, for, in order for the miracle to happen. They had to keep giving. They had to keep giving it out. Okay, they had to pass it on. Ex exercising your faith means saying, God, you're asking me to do this thing, and this here, this is all that I've got. I don't know what you can do with it, but here it is. Again, it's you invite God into the equation. You invite him to be the X factor, to be the variable that changes the outcome. And the other thing is Jesus was used in this miracle. He demonstrated thankfulness. And Pastor Kim mentioned this at the retreat yesterday. Jesus took the loaves and the fish and he blessed them. He thanked God for them before the miracle even happened. He knew what God wanted him to do. He exercised his faith in obedience, stepping out, but also in thankfulness before the miracle even happened. I mentioned that we had a brainstorming session at the leadership retreat of these dreams of things that we're believing God for. And part of that stepping out into obedience, into what God wants to do, we have this idea of creating a dream board for the church to have out in the foyer so you can see some of the things that we're believing God for so we can all partner together for what God wants to do in this place and in this community and we can be thanking God ahead of time for what he is going to do. That's part of stepping out in obedience, inviting God into the equation. Because he's, he, it's on his heart for us to do these things, these dreams that he's put. So we're just stepping forward in, in obedience and in thankfulness. So we have a God who is extreme, which means we get to exercise our faith. And in return, God shows us that he is a God who exceeds. Okay. God is a God who exceeds. So the definition of exceeds means to go beyond what is expected, to be better than or to surpass. 
like when someone exceeds your expectations, they go above and beyond. Sometimes to understand what a word means, it also helps to look at the opposite. So the opposite of exceeds means to fail, means to lose, to surrender, to fall short or give up, even to fall behind. I'm telling you, none of that is in God's vocabulary. Okay, that is not who our God is. Ephesians, Ephesians 3.20 says, Now all glory to God, who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Or in another translation, he does exceedingly, abundantly, above all we ask or imagine. God is the God of exceedingly. He's the God of abundantly. He never fails. He never loses. He never gives up. That's the God that we serve. Kids, say it out loud. Yeah. He is way maker, right? Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, right? That's who he is. That's who our God is. He is the God of exceedingly. He is a way maker. He is a promise keeper. He is able to do above and beyond all that we could ever ask or imagine. So in Mark, in our story with the feeding of the 5,000, let's look at verses 41 through 44. It says, Jesus took the five loaves and two fish, looked up toward heaven and blessed them. Then breaking the loaves into pieces, he kept giving the bread to the disciples so they could distribute it to the people. He also divided the fish for everyone to share, and they all ate as much as they wanted. And afterward, the disciples picked up 12 baskets of leftover bread and fish. A total of 5,000 men and their families were fed. Five loaves, two fish, okay, equals 12 baskets. Do that math, right? Five loaves, two fish, and we have 12 baskets left over. God is a God who exceeds. He is a God of abundance. He is a God of growth. It's who he is. Moses and the Israelites, when they left Egypt, they plundered the people. They didn't have to go to war before they left. I mean, obviously there was the plagues and all of these different things, but as they left, the Egyptians were giving them jewelry, giving them clothing, saying, go, go, get, get out. And they were giving them all of these things. Why? Because God is a God of exceeding. He blessed them. Jacob, working for his father-in-law, Laban, God multiplied the work that, that Jacob was doing, multiplied the sheep that he had. He brought growth for him. Solomon, God appeared to him in a dream and asks him, what do you want? What would you want from me? And in 1 Kings 3, 11 through 14, God said to him, because Solomon asked for wisdom, and God said, since you have asked for this and not for long life or wealth for yourself, nor have asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment and administering justice, I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart so that there will never have been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. Moreover, I will give you what you have not asked for, both wealth and honor, so that in your lifetime you will have no equal among kings. And if you walk in obedience to me and keep my decrees and commands, as David your father did, I will give you a long life. That's exceeding. Solomon asked for wisdom, and God blessed him with so much more than what he asked for, because that's the kind of God he is. Real quick, a testimony from one of my girls, who shall remain nameless, but she's the younger one. So so we were talking about this in the car. I asked her if she would share, and no, but hopefully it's okay that I share. But so at the retreat, um, I was coming home yesterday, and uh, got home, and I was like, Allie, whoops, sorry. (laughs) <laughs> it's like you worked so hard while I was gone I mean she did all of her chores and she went above and beyond and did some extra cleaning and things and she helped you know Scott put together a new vacuum cleaner that we got and then helped him in the garage with some stuff like she just did a lot and so I said you know what I'm just going to add this extra to your allowance 
you know, basically double her allowance. And she just was like, what? Because she wasn't expecting anything. But she just, and she almost, you know, just got teared up a little because it was like, what? I mean, it was such a surprise. Like, whoa, sorry, Allie. <laughs> Maybe I'll add another five to that. <laughs> But she was like, wow. So this morning in the car, we were talking about it. She's like, I can't believe that I did that and that you were, were going to give me this extra. And she goes, it's really true that God doubles what you give. Because she gave last week a certain amount, and we thought about God doubled what she gave because of what I gave her for what she did. That's the God that we serve, and I love that she got that this morning in the car as we were talking. She's like, God really does do that. His word's really true. He really does give more than what we give. You can't outgive God. And so I just love he is a God of exceeding. So multiplication. God just doesn't multiply. He does it exponentially. But what happens if you multiply something by uh, zero? Nothing. You multiply something by zero, you get nothing. What happens if you multiply something by one? You get the answer. It's the same thing. It doesn't change. But what happens if you multiply something by x? You don't know. You don't know. It depends on x. Completely depends on x. So what's God saying about that? If you give nothing, you get nothing. Okay? Now God is a God who can take nothing and turn it into something. Right? God can take nothing and turn it into something incredible. He spoke the world into existence. He's God. But he is calling us to give something. Right? If we're doing something, we're not willing to give anything of ourselves. And I'm, it doesn't have to be financial. It could be talent, time, whatever of yourself. Don't bury your talent. You have to be willing to participate in the equation. Okay? Because nothing times nothing is nothing. Or yes. So if you do something on your own times one, you're just getting yourself. It's like the same results. And God wants us to go after his dreams with other people. Okay, that's what multiplies it. Me times me is me. But if it's me and my kids or me and someone else and we're working together, God multiplies what is happening. It's how it works. And you multiply it by X and then look out. Because you're inviting God into whatever you're doing and just see what he does because he always exceeds expectations. So as I wrap it up here, um, there's one other picture that I want to show you because there's another definition of the term X factor. Okay, you guys recognize him, Simon Cowell? <laughs> right? That show was uh, another one of those reality shows where you're looking for talent and everything and who has the X factor? So it's not only a variable that changes an outcome, but it can be defined as a quality that you can't describe that makes someone very special. And they're looking for who has the, that X factor, that special something that sets them apart with how they play music, with how they sing, with whatever you know, it was on the show that they were looking at. It's the undefinable and intangible factor that can be the difference between success and failure. That's an X factor. So as followers of Jesus, what is our X factor? What's the thing that sets us apart? Moses, and we talked about this at the retreat as well, when Moses was going to go with the people to the promised land, and he said, God, we don't want to go unless your presence goes with us, because it's your presence that sets us apart from the other nations. You guys, it is God's presence that sets us apart, and we carry his presence with us wherever we go. It changes things because you carry God's presence in you. I was talking to June before service, and she's talking about a new job that she's in. She's carrying peace to families that come into the business that she's at. God can use her to bring peace into stressful situations because she carries God's presence with her. Right? You all have that inside of you. It's what sets us apart. It should be our X factor that someone comes in contact with Celine and they're like, man, there's something different about her. There's something just contagious. She's got this love. It's the presence of God in her. Okay? Let that be the X factor. And Philip, if you want to come up. We want people to come into this place and encounter the presence of God. It's what sets us apart. 
We are people who love to worship God, who love to experience his presence. We're doing that in kids' church. Kids are running around with the flags. They're dancing, but they're learning to to worship God, to connect with the Father. We want to do that as followers of Jesus, and we want to share that with the people around us. So I encourage you to go after God, to seek his presence, and invite him into the problem that you're trying to solve. Allow him to be the X factor, that variable that can change the outcome of what you're facing. Maybe you're working on budgets at home or or for work or whatever. Invite God to help you. Invite him to give you creativity how to solve some of the financial things that you might be facing. God can help you. He's a God of exceedingly. Okay, invite him to help you. Maybe it's relational. Okay, maybe it's a family problem. Maybe it's a situation with a coworker. Invite God into that and see what he will do because nothing is too difficult for him. And he is the God who does exceedingly abundantly above and beyond all we could ask or imagine. So stand with me. Let's pray. God, we thank you that you are a God of abundance. There's no lose in your vocabulary. There's no fail. And God, we're your kids. We're your kids, so we're on the winning team. God, we we don't have to feel like we have nothing. We have everything because you are our Heavenly Father. So God, I pray for everyone here, if there's a difficult situation that they're facing today, that they would invite you into that situation. Invite you in to be a part of the solution. God, that you would multiply their resources. God, if it's a financial difficulty, I just pray right now a blessing over the church, over businesses, over families, that you would multiply resources. That in a time where the economy is struggling, that your children would be excelling. That they would see the abundance because it's who you are. God, I pray blessing over health. God, for any sickness to go in the name of Jesus, that you would bring restoration to health. God, for relational issues, I pray that they would invite you into the situation to find healing, to find hope, to find restoration, because it's who you are. God, we thank you that you change everything, because you are the X factor. We just thank you, and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen like the prayer team to come forward if you would like someone to pray with you maybe you are facing a situation where you just need some encouragement or some prayer to invite God into that Um, we have a team that would love to pray with you otherwise carry God's presence with you as you go and bless those around you thank you have a great week